Being sued for credit card debt is not fun. Luckily, there are ways to work around the system to settle your debt outside of court and avoid having to go to trial. One of these ways is known as arbitration. Hey everyone, my name is Hannah with Solo Suit, and in today's video, I'm going to show you an interview that I had with a real attorney named Sarah Woke, and she explains the process of arbitration and how you can file a motion to compel arbitration if you have been sued for credit card debt. I hope that this video might help you prepare for the arbitration process and find other answers to your questions that you might have about credit card debt lawsuits. If you have any other questions, you can always head over to solosuit.com where we have a blog that has a lot of resources that can get you more answers to your other questions and help you get started on the path to resolving your credit card debt. Thanks so much for watching and good luck with resolving your debts and defending yourself in court or in arbitration. So I wanted to pick your mind a little bit about arbitration. You mentioned that you may file a motion to compel arbitration, which basically, according to my understanding, would move the case out of a court setting into a private arbitration setting. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how that can be effective for credit card debt cases and what the arbitration process looks like? Yeah, so when you are served with a lawsuit, if you are interested in filing a motion to compel arbitration, meaning forcing the other side to arbitrate your case, you wanna consider it right away. So you'd file it instead of filing an answer. So you need a basis though. You can't just force someone to go to arbitration for no reason. And usually that's gonna be in a contract. So a lot of contracts actually require arbitration. Some allow arbitration. So if you have that option, then you wanna consider whether it is a good idea for you. One of the things that people think is that arbitration is less expensive than going to court. And that is almost always false. You actually have to pay an arbitrator to handle the case. You pay them an hourly fee. You're not paying the judge an hourly fee. There are court filing fees and everything, but generally those are not going to add up to be nearly as much as paying an arbitrator. However, the fact that it is costly is also sometimes a reason why you wanna file it because the other side is going to be paying as well. And so a lot of times if the debt isn't worth a lot compared to how much the creditor would be paying to arbitrate the case, they don't wanna to go to arbitration. It's not worth it for them. So if you file a motion to compel arbitration and they think it's going to be successful or it is successful, meaning it's granted by the judge, then they would have to go to arbitration to pursue the case. And we have had multiple clients where they do that and the other side drops the case. So it can be a very, very smart tactical move that being said, it can be risky because you might have to split the fees with them. And if you're successful and the plaintiff continues to arbitration, which they can do, then you're on the hook for fees also. Um, so you know, it's kind of a, a personal call there. Um, something else about the, the, process of, of our, the process of arbitration, it's very similar to the court process. However, you don't have the option for a jury. So if you're someone who, if you go to trial, you wanna be before a jury and not just one person who's similar to a judge, then you might not want arbitration. I don't really think that's a reason to not go to arbitration if that's the only thing you're considering, but it's definitely something to consider. Um, so those are the main things. And um, like I said, the process is very similar to a lawsuit where you'll have an opportunity for discovery, information gathering from the other side, and the other side will also be able to ask you for information. The arbitrator usually will encourage settlement. That will frequently happen more with the arbitrator instead of going to another party like you would in, in a court case though. And then you'll go to an arbitration, which is the word for the trial in arbitration, basically. You're still going to be questioning witnesses and submitting documents. Some arbitrators treat things a little less formally and participate more than a judge will because the judge have to follow, the judges have to follow pretty strict rules. Um, and the arbitrators have some more leeway for, for rules and how they handle things. But the general process is going to be the same. I love that. So arbitration can be a really good move if maybe you have a debt that's not super big and you want to try to leverage it to get the other party to just dismiss the case because it could end up being more expensive to go to arbitration than the debt is even worth, right? Exactly. So maybe, so maybe it's a smarter move if you don't owe like a ton of money. So I guess, could you give us like a range of how much might make sense? Like if you're being sued for a thousand or less, maybe it would make sense to do arbitration or do you have an, an amount in mind? Yeah. I mean, I would think that if your debt is probably even 
20,000 or less, the other side is probably not going to want to pay for arbitration. Now your contract also might say who pays or how arbitration is paid for. Frequently it's split. So you would pay half and the other side would pay half. And in that case, I think, you know, 20 or maybe even $30,000 of debt would not be worth going to arbitration. But if the contract says you pay for the arbitration fees, obviously you want to know that that's the case and the other side wouldn't care. But there are situations also where the plaintiff might have to pay for all the fees. And that again would be even more money for them and very little risk for you. And all those situations would kind of change you know the amount but i think probably if the debt is 20 to 30 thousand dollars or less there's a good chance the other side won't want to deal with arbitration and at a minimum will be willing to settle for a pretty small amount of course there's no guarantees yeah we actually had recently uh, and i interviewed a solo suit customer who was being sued i think in south carolina and it was discover credit card so big credit card company was coming after him and he filed an answer and then they filed a motion and in response to their motion he filed a motion to compel arbitration which is another service that we offer at solo suit we offer that document people can customize to their case so he used that and he filed it into the case and then they just dropped the case so it must have been one of those situations where for them it wasn't worth the cost of going the cost and the time of going to arbitration to fight for this particular debt i also think he had other defenses in his case that probably led to the dismissal but yeah that's that's really cool that that's such a good tool for people who maybe aren't being sued for big numbers that they can use to either push it out of out of the court process, which can be intimidating. But I also think it's interesting, like if you file a motion to arbitration, do you think that you might increase your chances of being able to come up with a settlement outside of court and arbitration altogether? You know, like if the if the arbitration has potential to be granted, do you think that the collector might say, well, then let's just get on a phone call and try to like settle before any court or arbitration date? Would you say that's true too? Yeah, no, Hannah, you're totally right. I think that is very likely. I also think even just showing the other side that you're going to do things in the case is good. So regardless of what it is, if they see that you're not going to just sit there and make it easy for them, that's also an incentive. So not only do you have in that situation their potential interest in not wanting to pay for and deal with arbitration, but also just knowing that you're going to be involved. So I think there is a good chance that they might reach out and try to settle. And honestly, if they don't, you can too. You can you can talk to the other side about settlement. You might want to have an attorney's help or some sort of assistance, but you know there's nothing stopping you from contacting the other side too. Yeah, I think that's cool. It just feels empowering to know if you do get sued for debt, you know, you don't necessarily have to hire an attorney. Of course, an attorney will help. But if you know the facts enough in your case and your case isn't too complicated, you also can be empowered to reach out and have that conversation on your own and settle before going to court, which is awesome. I really hope that this video was useful. And if you've been sued for debt, I hope you know you're not alone. Solo Sued is rooting for you. And that is why we share conversations like the one I just had with Sarah. It's to help individuals know how to resolve disputes and resolve debts. So if you have any other questions or you want more information, please reach out to us at support at solosuit.com or check out our website. As always, thanks so much for watching and good luck with resolving your case.